Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We are very glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Altman Health Systems, Studio Arts and Glass, and Genuer Appraisals and Liquidations. Today, Brad and I are broadcasting from our administrative offices, and our very special guest is Marna Revlock, Certified Nurse Practitioner at Vitality Med and Professor of Community Health Nursing at Kent State Stark Campus. Good morning, Marna, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me here. Do you remember a time when you had abundant energy and felt vibrant? You slept well and you didn't need caffeine. You were able to consume foods that didn't result in weight gain. If you did gain weight, you were able to make some easy adjustments and lose it fast. As we age, things change. Perhaps you're struggling to recall words easily, or you're wishing you were experiencing that passionate spark with your spouse or loved one. Are you wondering what happened? The Mayo Clinic has published studies that show changes in hormone levels and metabolism <clears throat> as we age. When you were younger, hormones like thyroid, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, and pregnenolone were produced in abundance and in balance. But aging and stress can deplete many of the hormones that kept your body young, healthy, and strong. The good news is, is that they can be replaced with bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. We call it BHRT. Bioidentical hormones are not magic. And they don't cure all diseases, but they can restore your body to a healthier place, similar to when you were younger. This morning, we're going to talk with us about Marna, about BHRT, and the services offered at Vitality Med. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program today is available on our podcast. Just look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and please subscribe. Okay. So, Marna, welcome to the show again. Please introduce yourself and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, your background and training, and the work you do at Vitality Med. Okay, so I'm a lifelong resident of Stark County, graduated from Glen Oak High School. I obtained a bachelor's degree in 1993 from Franciscan University of Steubenville. Mm -hmm. I've been married for over 25 <laughs> years and have two children. Um, then after my children started to grow up, I decided to go back and get a master's in nursing education from Kent State. Um, and that was, uh, I did that for a couple of years. And then after a while, I thought I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna become a certified nurse practitioner. So I finished my program through them. Eventually I became certified in bioidentical hormone replacement, which is what we're talking about today. Hmm. But currently I teach at Kent State Stark. I teach community health nursing, which I absolutely love because it's all about prevent disease prevention and health promotion. I also work for Lucino Foot and Ankle um, as a nurse practitioner once a week. And then I have my practice on the side. And in reality, I wouldn't be able to do all of these <laughs> things without hormone replacement. I see. Okay. How many students are at, at Kent Stark? Do you have any idea? Oh my gosh. Um, I want to say, oh, you caught me off guard here. Maybe yeah. 1,500, 1,400. Okay. okay. I know it's grown dramatically. So, and I'll tell you, they have great programs out there. They have a bachelor's in nursing that you can get. Um, and that campus is actually 40% cheaper than the main campus. That's what so, you're doing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great school. You get that one-on-one -on -one help with people. So with your teachers and it's beautiful. People need to check it out. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, so what is your medical background and, and how did you decide to specialize in hormone replacement? So it really starts with my own journey. Um, very early on, so I've been a nurse for 25 years or actually going on almost 30. I started to recognize that patients in the hospital, there was a correlation with their chronic disease and the lifestyle choices that they made. So I knew for myself, if I wanted to have a healthy, vibrant life, that I would need to make healthy choices. But in my 20s, I had a little bit of a brain injury, and suddenly my cycles, everything shifted with my hormones. My cycles became irregular. I started to have more mood swings. I started breaking out with acne. Um, just Things just didn't seem normal for me. By my 30s, I noticed my immune system was really starting to take a turn for the worse. I mean, I developed shingles in my 30s, which is primarily a disease of other people. Um, I started to notice a little bit of weight gain, particularly around the middle. I had poor sleep. I was fatigued all the time. And I would go to doctors and I'd talk with them about my problem. I'm like, you know, something's off. I think it's my hormones. And they'd say, no, you're too young to have these problems. You know, you just need to go home and 
you know, just relax. Well, how can you relax with little kids, right? So <laughs> by my 40s, I noticed my cholesterol started going up, my triglycerides were up, and then Jeez. I developed, yeah, and then I developed POTS syndrome. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but it's pretty debilitating. And it, at that point, that's when I recognized I have to do something different. I have to find somebody who can help me. So I started doing all of this research and I, it kind of clicked with me knowing with my medical background, I could put two and two together. And I was like, you know what, this is my hormones. So I found a doctor who was specialized in hormone replacement. And I'm telling you, it was, the effect was almost immediate. I like, I had the best sleep of my life in, well, I should say the best sleep in years. Mm. And I, I just felt so good the next day. I had all this energy, my brain fog lifted. And, you know, it was just, I felt good again. I felt vibrant. Now, not everybody has those immediate effects, but I think because I was so depleted, I noticed it so fast. Mm -hmm. But what was more important was that over time, I started to notice that my abdominal weight started to go away. I started to build muscle mass. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, I felt like I was getting smarter because my brain was <laughs> looking better. Great. Uh, yeah. And just <laughs> overall, um, oh, and my cholesterol improved, my triglycerides improved. And I just had this ability to do more than I had done previously. But you know what? This is when I knew, when I started to see the shift in my cholesterol and triglycerides, that was when I knew, you know what? I'm onto something here. This is a game changer in terms of preventative medicine. And since I was so interested in preventative medicine, for me, it was like, oh, this is great. I, you know, this is my field. This is what I need to do. But it took some time because I had a family, I was working and, um, you know, going back to school can be quite a challenge, but yeah. my family supported me. Um, they, they, there were a lot of nights where I was in the basement and they were watching TV. Um, you know, so I missed out on some of those things, but I'm grateful that they were there to support me through that. Eventually became a nurse practitioner. And the only thing is that I was concerned because I, I knew that there weren't a lot of doctors who were going to support me in this decision. Yeah. And in, in giving hormones to people. And so that's when I decided to start my own practice called Vitality Med. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Can you talk to our listeners about the controversy surrounding bioidentical hormones? Sure. Um, so years ago, like let's say before the year 2000, it was pretty common <laughs> for doctors to prescribe hormone replacement to women who entered into menopause because it was known that the hormones reduce symptoms such as night sweats, hot flashes, brain fog, decreased libido. But more importantly, there were a bunch of large scale studies that demonstrated protection from heart disease and cancers and osteoporosis and Alzheimer's. So there was a, a lot of support for that. But these studies, they were, what was interesting about them is that they were all conducted on women who were either before menopause, in perimenopause, or right in that early time frame of having developed menopause. So there was a lot of great success with that research and the outcomes. But in around 2002, there was the Women's Health Initiative was done. And that was a study that was produced on older women. So these were women who were 10 years plus past menopause. So what that means is that these women had lost the protective effect of hormones, and they already were in that process of developing disease, chronic disease, such as diabetes, heart disease. They had plaques that were developing in their, in their heart, around their heart, and in their brain. So they had some risk factors. And what they found with this study, well, first of all, they did a couple of different arms. They did no hormones, they did estrogen only, and then they did estrogen plus progestin. Now, let me just tell you, progestin is not a bioidentical form of, of hormone. Um, so it is more commercially made, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But what they found was that the estrogen plus progestin, there were some incidents that occurred. So for example, there were, um, for every 10,000 women, there were eight more cancers of breast cancer, six more cardiac events, hmm. six more strokes. So like doctors started to look at these things and they thought, whoa, 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 look, hormones are causing all these problems. But again, these were problems that were 
developing in women who had already progressed. They already had some sort of chronic disease developing. Um, but in the estrogen only arm, they found that everything, like either your risk was the same as the general population or less. In fact, they found six fewer colon cancers, five fewer hip fractures. But really, when you think about this in the world of statistics, it's hardly significant. I mean, we don't know, was it actually from the, the hormones themselves or was it from something else? Hmm. So in the end though, they found also, it was only that first year that women had an increased risk. After that first year, there was a, um, there was a lot lower risk. And the longer that the women were on the hormones, the better they did. Okay. Our first break is here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Friends, just a reminder to stop by the pharmacy and talk to a pharmacist, our pharmacist, about our new Health Threat Matters Drug Savings Program. We want to help you stay well and save money. So I think we talked about this a little, but what did we learn as a result of the Women's Health Initiative study that was halted in 2002? That sounds ugly. Why did they halt it? Well, they halted it because there were those increased incidences in the first year that I described a little bit earlier. But again, that was because they were doing this, this testing on women who had already developed disease. But what they what happened was a group went back a couple years later and they said, wait a minute, we didn't really publish the conclusions accurately. And what we found is that the benefits actually outweigh the risks. There is a slight increase in adverse effects if you are taking progestins, which is not a bioidentical form of the hormone. Um, but all in all, after that first year, the risks are actually reduced for all age ranges. So you can still have bioidentical hormone replacement. It just needs to be done a little bit differently if you're older. Um, a couple more things. All in all, they said there was a decrease in breast cancer in all groups, a decrease in coronary artery disease. And this is where I said there was only a slight increase of stroke or, or um, deep, deep <laughs> the um, DVTs, I'm sorry. Um, and this was basically, but the mortality overall was the same. Sorry about that. Okay. So what's the difference between bioidentical hormones as opposed to the commercially made hormones? So it's all about the chemical structure. Remember when you took chemistry back in high school and you saw all of those hexagons with the lines and all of the different atoms or atoms and different um, chemistry pieces there. Well, that chemical structure is made specifically, there's different chemical structures and the chemical structures are made identical to the human body. So let me repeat that. Hmm. Bioidentical hormone replacement, that chemical structure is made to look identical to the hormones in the woman's body. Okay. When you use a lot of the commercially prepared ones, like the progestins, they are made to look identical to an animal. So for example, a horse, that's what Provera comes from, yeah. um, or Premarin, a lot of that, that comes from horse's urine. So that hormone looks like a horse's. So when you think about that, if you take that in, you might have some side effects because that chemical structure is not made to be identical to your structure. So what we do with the bioidenticals is the, that chemical structures just like yours, and therefore you're replacing it and you have less chance of a side effect. It doesn't mean that you might not, let's say I give you too much progesterone. I'm just throwing this one out because this is one that people would typically understand. Progesterone is the hormone of pregnancy. What happens when women get pregnant? They feel very relaxed, they're very fatigued, they wanna sleep a lot. So if I were to give you too much progesterone, you would experience that, but that would be the cue to me that, hey, you know what? We need to dial this back because this is too much for this individual. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so what is research telling us currently about hormone replacement therapies? So Brad, we have to look at all of the studies. We have to look at the ones before the Women's Health Initiative, and we have to look at the ones afterwards. But all in all, there's multiple studies that's demonstrating the benefit of hormone replacement. 
especially when it's given to women who are just around that perimenopause, early menopause phase, because those hormones haven't been lost for a long time and the body has still been able to protect itself from chronic disease. Um, we've learned there's lots of studies out there. There's an estrogen prevention of atherosclerosis trial, a CORA study that was done on heart disease. And we can actually see, and even the, one more, the elite trial, we can actually see that some of the plaque with estrogen can actually be reduced in some people. So that's huge. You know, you don't see that with statins. You know, you don't see that reversal of heart disease like you can actually find with estrogen. Now, as you said earlier, it's not a magic pill. If I take all, I could take all the estrogen in the world, but if I still eat terrible and I don't exercise and I have a very stressful life, you know, you're not necessarily going to see all of those changes. But if you do make those changes and you have this behind you, it's like that extra oomph so that you can, um, so that your body can start to protect itself. And I want to, I want to say heal itself, but you know, it's like I said, it's not magic. So you mentioned some already, but why don't you kind of, why don't we touch on some of the symptoms people experience throughout their life that might indicate a hormone balance? And, and I guess I preface yeah. that with, I think many people at times will recognize that maybe they're stressed or they're tired, but I don't think they step back and look at the bigger picture of their habits and, and maybe their whole body chemistry picture and how it might contribute. Well, yeah, and I think you, you have a good point. Sometimes we're so stressed and we're just going on with life and, <laughs> excuse me, we tend to think over time that, you know, this is, um, this is just life. This is just the way it is. But what happens over time is people, both men and women, they tend to experience a slow decrease in their general well-being. They lose their energy isn't as strong as it used to be. That stamina, their libido, which is huge for a lot of people, um, muscle mass, all of that starts to kind of just wane a little bit. People might have problems with sleep, anxiety, or depression. Um, a lot of times, right when those hormones are starting to shift, you see changes in cholesterol or triglycerides or weight gain. Um, so now people can do things, you can do things in your life outside of hormone replacement that can fix some of these things that can help you to feel better, improve your energy. And there, it's about behavior and lifestyle. Go to bed earlier, get a good night's sleep, eat healthier. Those things do help. Um, take time to reduce stress in your life. Relax sometimes. Don't be always running around. Um, but, you know, so, so those are kind of the symptoms you'll see. But sometimes even for myself, I was doing a lot of those things and I still wasn't getting relief. And that's where the hormone replacement actually was that boost to really help me get ahead. Um, with hormone replacement, or I'm sorry, with hormone changes, for men, it tends to be more subtle. You know, they don't have this drastic drop off like women do. So, you know, sometimes it's even their mood might start shifting. They might become a little bit more moody or their sleep is disturbed. They're waking up in the middle of the night or having difficulty falling asleep that weight gain, that spare tire. Um, but for women, it's definitely more noticeable. They'll see hot flashes, night sweats, heavy cycles. Um, in younger women, they might also have heavy cycles or irregular cycles. So those are all pieces of um, things that you might see. Brain fog is huge. That's another piece that a lot of women complain about. And yes. they do experience relief from that brain fog. Wow. Any other important tips to maintain hormone balance as you age? Um, so, you know, it really is about managing your stress well. Um, if you can manage your stress well, that keeps your cortisol from robbing from your progesterone. So let me give you an example. Earlier, we talked about the chemical structure of, of one chemical compound versus another, bioidentical versus commercial. Well, we have all of these chemical structures being made all the time in our body and cortisol is one of them. And that is our stress hormone. So as we start to develop stress, our body produces all of this cortisol, but over time, if you don't have enough to supplement that, your body starts to rob from progesterone and testosterone because the chemical structure, the way it's designed and the way it looks, if you were to draw it out, looks almost identical. 
So the body starts to rob from that. And that's why all of a sudden, when women are in their 30s and they're taking care of their kids and they're working, all of a sudden their sleep is getting deprived. They're getting all this weight gain. They're, they're, they become more anxious. And that's because your cortisol, your stress level is beyond what it needs to be. And your cortisol is getting depleted. So really managing lifestyle um, is huge for keeping those hormones in balance. Not only that, I would also say making sure you're taking good multivitamin. Some good supplements are very important because our diet is not the American diet. Most of the stuff you're buying on the shelf, it's not totally good for you. Um, you know, there, there, because there's a lot of additives and different chemicals in the processed foods, and that can affect, affect the gut lining. And when that lining gets um, disturbed, then that can also affect your hormones and function. It affects your brain and the way you, you handle stress. So making sure that you're eating healthy and good whole foods is really important. Hmm. Wow, interesting. Are you up still, Brad? You got one more? I do, but I think we better break for the news. Okay, doc. It is time for the news, the bottom of the hour. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. This morning, we're talking with Marna Revelock, Certified Nurse Practitioner at Vitality Med. All right. We've talked a lot about hormones and, and different uh, phases of women's uh, journey through aging. Why don't we talk a little bit briefly about the benefits of bioidentical hormones during menopause? Okay. So, um, so overall, when you think about it, it's, it's important to maintain hormone balance as you age. You know, the human body was made to preserve its function, but as you age, those protective mechanisms start to wear out. So particularly in menopause, you'll see women who will have hot flashes, night sweats, brain fog, decreased libido, but even that decreased muscle mass. Um, and I want to talk about decreased muscle mass, though, for just a second and why this is so important. There are more and more studies that are correlating um, muscle mass to longevity and quality of life. So it's really important to maintain that. And when you look at older women, you don't see a lot of muscle mass. So it's important to maintain that, to maintain that quality of life. Um, <clears throat> more importantly, um, I guess, you know, the hormones around menopause too, they are protective. They're there to protect you against the heart disease, breast cancer, diabetes. Now, does that mean that you're never going to get a disease? It doesn't. Um, you know, you're all, you can always be susceptible to that for different reasons, whether it's genetics or environment. But those hormones around menopause, the idea is really to just give you back that protection so that you can continue to have a good quality of life over time. I mean, the idea, you know, I think about it like this. When you age, you know, people put all of this money into their retirement right? So that they can live off of that retirement and enjoy it. But what happens is that by the time people get to that age, they are actually spending more time going to doctors and taking care of all of their health problems than they are out on the golf course or, or playing with their grandkids. You know, like they, their quality of life really declines. So really, I look at this as this is an investment in your health, just like you would invest financially. This is about an investment in your health so that when you get to that point and you have that time and that energy, you want to have the energy to enjoy it. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Do men go through menopause? Yes, they do. So typically that is called um, andropause. And like I said earlier, it tends to be a little bit um, more subtle than what a woman would see. So they might have um, what happens, they have a decrease in testosterone. And so what they might start to experience is a decrease for that zest for life that they used to have. There's a decrease in sexual interest. They have lower energy. They might experience depression or brain fog. They might have difficulty sleep or irregular sleep patterns. So, um, so yeah, they do experience it, but you don't hear about it quite as much. Define brain fog. So brain fog is, you know, it's just that feeling almost, uh, I like to say like when I have a lot of congestion in my head, 
sometimes it just feels like my head can't think as clearly or, and I just feel a little bit slower. Um, one of the big ones is word recall. You know, if you can't find that word that you're looking for and, you know, you're just lost and, or you see someone, you're like, oh my gosh, I know them. What's their name? What's their name? That's brain fog. So, and it can be disruptive, <laughs> especially now this is the other piece I, I like to think about. So in our careers, you know, we have all of this experience and a lot that we can give back to our work. But as you age, if you're not as sharp as you used to be, people don't always respect you in the same way. They start to look and they go, oh yeah, that person's getting a little bit older. And they start to notice the anxiety that they have. You know, as I age, I want to come off with a lot of confidence and I want to show people that, hey, I'm sharp. I can manage this issue or this problem. I can do it because I have the wisdom. I have the, I have the wisdom behind me to give back. And that's huge to be able to function and have the wisdom. You don't always see that in people as you age. They have the wisdom, but they don't have the ability to fully function, um, especially with their brain. So that's important. That's interesting. Okay. Um, okay. Well, when should hormones be tested? So I would say anytime someone starts to no notice that they're having any of the symptoms that we already discussed, um, they would should also be tested if they have irregular, irregular or heavy periods. Um, or really any time after puberty, they can be tested. So, I, but most importantly, if you are having the signs and symptoms of anything we discussed, or are you just feeling like something's off? Some people just get tested because they just want a baseline. So it's really up to the individual, but definitely if they're symptomatic. Okay, so hormone testing, what are we looking for? Um, what do you, so are you talking about what kind of testing would I be doing? Well, actually, you know, what hormones are we looking at? Are we looking at the whole raft of them or? Okay. So, um, typically you would do a hormone panel will consist of testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, thyroid. And when we're looking at thyroid, we're looking at all different parts of it. So like T3, T4, hmm. um, we're, some people want to even look into growth hormone, although that's really expensive. That's not done very much. Yeah. Um, but I also like to look at people's cholesterol because I want to see, you know, what's their baseline? Can we improve it? Can we make it better? Um, let's see. Did I miss it? Pregnenolone. Um, Pregnenolone is not normally tested, but that is one that we would look at. DHEA. Uh, that's another one that's a parent hormone to testosterone. Yeah. Um, I cortisol, sometimes I look at their cortisol too, depending on how much stress yeah. they have, because I might need to supplement with something to help their support their adrenal glands. So there's a lot of different things that uh, um, to, to look at, but there's just that baseline too, just the, the basic mm. hormones. Yeah, that's a bunch of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, never, yeah. I guess, I guess in hormone testing, I never realized that we we're going to test for so many. Um, I'm just thinking about some of the basics, you know. Right, um, right. And it's nice because a lot of times, especially as you're getting older and you're symptomatic, a lot of times insurance will cover it. If not, sometimes I try to find other locations where if my patient has to pay out of pocket, then um, I look for places where they can maybe get a deal or a discount. So um, sorry, my cats are starting to fight. <laughs> so you might hear someone scream here in a second. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so I try to help my patients out <laughs> to figure out what where they can get it done as cheaply as possible. Sure. How about men and and women both? Should we hormone test both? Um. Yeah, I do. I I hormone test both, especially because you know testosterone also plays a huge role in um, the prevention of cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's and and um, diabetes. So we really want to make sure, like, okay, is that level where it needs to be? Now, I will tell you one thing, though, is that when it comes to blood level testing, you have to be careful just looking at the numbers, because when you're testing someone's blood, you're only testing what's outside of the cell. You're not you cannot test what is inside the cell and the hormones don't start to work until they get into the cell. And there can be a lot of things that prevent that hormone from getting into the cell. So we want to make sure that we are actually getting the results that we need. So for thyroid's a perfect example. You have a lot of people who say, they go to their doctor and they say, look, I'm gaining weight, I'm tired, I'm losing my hair, my skin is dry. And 
the doctor does their test and they say, well, you're within range. Well, but what if that thyroid isn't getting into there? What if it's not converting in the body like it's supposed to, and that person isn't getting the results? Maybe they still need some thyroid supplementation. So it's really important because every person is unique. You know, I take, I, I'm able to take a really high dose of estrogen where other people wouldn't be able to tolerate that at all. And a lot of doctors look at me and they go, you know, that's kind of a high dose. And I say, you know what? I don't feel anything unless I'm up to this dose. <laughs> and my levels actually, it takes a lot more. My body metabolizes it very, very fast. So everybody's unique. And that's the unique thing about what I do is I really look at the uniqueness of the individual. What are the symptoms? I want to know the baseline. I want that lab work, but I also want to know what they're experiencing. Very interesting. All right. We've talked a little bit about um, benefits from hormone replacement. Is there anything else you want to add before we move on? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, okay. I think that, I, I just think that, you know, this is about quality of life and what type of quality of life do you want as you age? You know, I've seen a lot of people, I've worked in long-term care. I've worked there quite a few years. And, you know, I see the end result of what happens when you lose your hormones and when you're not taking care of yourself. So the best thing you can do is really protect yourself, um, eat healthy, you know, and, and this is the other thing. A lot of times people say, well, gosh, it's expensive, isn't it? It is a little bit expensive to, to take hormones, but it's worth yeah. it because and most of my patients, they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea I would feel this good. And um, so they feel there's a real value in it because now they're feeling so good that they can pick up an extra job or they can work longer. They can get that promotion that maybe they weren't getting before because their brain wasn't functioning well. So it's, it's pretty impressive to see what can happen for, with hormone replacement. Oh, one more thing I'd like to say. You asked me about one other thing is the interesting piece that I see a lot is the change in the relationship between the men and women. They become a lot closer. They start to have a lot more fun in their marriage again. It becomes very flirty. They feel this romance that they hadn't felt in a while that they were able to connect with one another. So that's a pretty cool thing because it's strengthening that bond between the spouses. Interesting. Okay, our final breaks here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Thanks for joining us. Let's get back to the last segment of the show. Okay, Marna, we've talked about a lot of stuff today, and there's like so many little rabbit holes I want to go down, but I think it's important for the listeners that we talk about um, your holistic approach. And I'm wondering in what way do you focus on um, – overall wellness beyond just drug therapy for hormone replacement? Okay. So, um, yeah, so I mostly focus on the hormones, but I also like to like really be on top of the latest research that I can. So, um, if we're talking about other supplements or drugs, for example, low dose naltrexone is, is huge for benefits for people with neuropathy, migraines, inflammation, even cancer prevention. I mean, you got me onto this a lot, Brad, just working with you and telling me about it. And I found that it's, it is really helping a lot of my patients. Um, so I mentioned supplements, but the other thing is, is I want to look at this person so that each year they are becoming healthier and healthier. So, you know, we look at, okay, what's your diet? What's your sleep patterns? What are your relationship patterns? What, what's your stress level like? And a lot of times if I see that someone isn't able to fully overcome something, um, maybe it's particular habits or something like that. I also, in my, in, I want to say in my former life, I was also a health coach, a life coach. And so I will bring in some of those little, um, those skills that I have to get the person to really think about their own life and, and really come up with their own solution. You know, one of the things I tell my students all the time is that education is power. And so if I can educate the person, but then also get them to kind of like come up with things themselves, it becomes very a very powerful tool. And they're able to make those changes that are needed to make the adjustments so that they can take the next step to become healthier. 
Um, yes. so, so I really look at that. I, I spend a lot of time if I have a patient who's a smoker and I really want to get them off smoke is to stop smoking because yeah. it has so many, I'm telling you working in podiatry, it has, you, you see terrible oh. detrimental effects from it. Um, so, yeah. you know, I, so I'm working with my patients very closely to make sure that year to year to year, they are getting healthier and healthier because I know that that has been my experience and I want that for my patients. Interesting. So Marna, how is Vitality Med different than a traditional doctor's office? Um, I think what's unique, well, first of all, I already mentioned that I'm working three different jobs. So I do, Vitality Med is kind of like my side job, my side gig. Um, but and some people would look at that and go, well, that's kind of inconvenient. You don't have typical office hours. Um, yes, I guess it could be. But on the flip side, it's also very inconvenient and very personal because I can, if, if my patient says, hey, do you think you could see me this weekend for something? Okay, let me check my calendar. If I'm available, sure, I'll meet you this weekend or in the evening. Or I try to set one day aside that I can do a little bit of like a couple hours, one day a week that I can see patients. Um, but so, so that's the unique aspect of it though, is that the patient has a one-on-one -on -one relationship with me. If when they call the office, they get me, you know, they get a response within 24 hours from me. Yeah. So that, that's the unique piece. And I found that like my, my, my relationships with my patients, they feel very genuine and um, I, I truly care about them. If I, if I see something like I know, oh, this patient, they have this issue going on. I found a really good video that they might want to watch on YouTube. And so I'll send it to them because I, I care about, I know that they care about these things. They wouldn't be coming to me if they didn't think that they had something wrong. So I want to help them to meet their health goals. Um, so I guess that's one of the things that's unique about me. I am doing some telehealth. I see patients in Ohio and now I just recently got a license in Florida. Um, so hmm. You know, that that it, that is convenient for people who live on the other side of the state. Um, unfortunately, I can't see people in any other state at this time just due to my licensure. <laughs> so let's talk about insurance. I know you made a decision not to take insurance, and I I think it's important that you you share your your thought perspective on that. Right. So as I was working in my practicum to get my nurse practitioner certificate. I saw a lot of doctors who were very stressed about insurance because the insurance companies basically dictated how the doctor had to perform. He had to see the patient within 15 minutes. It had, if he was going to diagnose something he, it, or, or prescribe a medication, it had to be the way that they said it had to be. And they just felt very, from what my perspective of what I saw, it was very frustrating and I could see doctors getting burnt out. And here I am promoting this lifestyle of wellness to people and reducing your stress. I didn't want to take on all that stress. So I decided, and particularly because I'm working just, you know, kind of casual basis, I didn't have, um, I don't really have the ability to hire people to manage all of that stuff as well. So that's really what I do. Now, some people say, well, how can you afford that? Um, you know, when I first started this process, we were living on one income. Um, I worked one day a week only. And what I did was I, I, I added up the cost. What's it going to cost me to see this doctor for a year? And I added it all up and I saved money. I set it aside for several months until I had enough money. And I went into it kind of feeling like this is a gamble. You know, I'm giving all this money away. Is this really going to work for me? Yeah. And um yeah, it did. And it totally changed the trajectory of my life because now I'm healthier and I'm a nurse practitioner, something I would have never done before. And now I'm helping other people. So, um, well, anyways, I kind of got off the topic there about insurance, but no. it's mainly, it's a personal decision so that I can continue to live the life that I want to live and not be dictated by insurance companies, how to run my practice. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I think that's excellent. And I think you, you've highlighted something that you're also not wasting hours trying to manage insurance billing and things that it's maddening for us at the pharmacy level. There's things that we cannot do to help patients because of insurance companies. 
and right. it's ridiculous. But that's another show <laughs> and another thing. Um, <laughs> right. we're, we're we've got about three four minutes left. I want to make sure that you share your contact information um, with our listeners, and then if you have any you know kind of in summary comments you'd like to leave in closing, the floor is yours. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. So um, I have a website. It's Vitality Med NP for nursepractitioner.com. Or you can email me at mrevlock. So it's M R E V L O C K at vitalitymednp.com. Um, you can also find my, if you go to the website, vitalitymednp.com, you can also find um, my. Um, my email and my phone number on there to call me personally. And um, so what do I wanna leave you with? I mean, uh, is it worth it for the majority of people? I would say it's definitely worth it. Um, there is, if, if you come to see me, you might get a little pushback from your doctors, but I will show you the research. And because I think the research is how our, that, that's how we have to practice medicine. We have to look at the latest research. What is it saying? What is it telling us to do? Um, because it's only through research, research that we know, is this a good decision for our patients or is it not a good decision? And the research is overwhelming when you really look into it. And unfortunately, doctors don't, because they're being dictated by health insur or by insurance companies, they don't have the time to really look into it. I, I don't fault the doctors at all. Um, you know, they're, they're very, very busy. They have lives to live as well. Um, and there are a lot of good practitioners out there. So, um, but you might be able to find one who can help you. The important thing is, is that if you're going to work with someone in hormone replacement, you want to work with someone who's been trained, they're knowledgeable about it, and someone who can specialize with you. I will give you one last thing to say. Some people do um, pellets for hormone replacement therapy. I do not. The reason I do not do that is because when you do pellet therapy, first of all, it's more expensive. Um, second of all, it causes the hormones to kind of raise up and they're up for a while and then they drop. And so this person starts to feel this decline and they're not getting that continuous protection like they are if they are taking the hormones every day, the same dose. I mean, I want my, my goal is for my patients to be protected and, um, and to feel good every day. I don't want them to become sluggish on month three after that pellet is starting to wear off. So that's, uh, that's why I do not do pellet therapy. So that's it. It's been great being here with you guys. Thank you yeah. for listening to me fumble every now and then. Um, but hopefully your audience learned something today. Thank you to our guest certified nurse practitioner at Vitality Med and a professor of community health nursing at Kent State Stark Campus. We would like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your healthcare provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Altman Health System, Studio Arts and Glass, Genuine Appraisals and Liquidations. As always, we thank our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week. See you right here next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you very much.